Hello, hello, dear listeners, to another episode. Each week we have a new one, a debate that helps you understand current motions. Today's episode topic I debate with Sebastian is recorded voluntarily here in our rooms, through our microphones, with our computers. We decided that you can use it however you want, even in a criminal case. How are you doing, Sebastian, now that I established that fact? Now that you've established that fact, that I guess we don't have to debate about anything. <laughs> uh, one, uh, the motion today indeed is smart speaker audio data should be used to solve criminal cases. But smart speakers, we mean the things like Amazon's Alexa, uh, Google's uh, Google Mini, Google Home. Uh, I think Apple has something also, don't know the name, um, Apple Home. So uh, Apple Hub. I mean, now that we talk about this, if I now say, okay, Google call mom, how many listeners hate me now? <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait, we should say more distinctly and repeat it. Okay, Google, what's the time? Uh oh. Alexa. Alexa, SMS mom, I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> uh, all right getting back to to normal here um, alexa call john no hang on alexa email john i want a divorce <laughs> troublemaker <laughs> there must be someone who's called john living on the edge it actually has been a case i remember like last year the year before that that uh, they had a there was a tv commercial somewhere in the states and in that ad they were showing a little girl ordering a dollhouse using Alexa. And this actually triggered Alexa and, and placed orders. At least I've been told that it was. And by now, I think they made it foolproof. So they made sure that Alexa actually can distinguish between a voice that is seriously addressing it or a voice that comes out of a speaker, I think. Got it, got it. Anyway, coming back to the motion, smart speaker audio data should be used to solve criminal cases. So you're, 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 you're in favor of, of being able to use all that data to solve yeah. criminal cases, right? To try and find murderers and, and just solve cases, basically. And I'm saying, oh, no, 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 we can't do that. And I have my arguments to say, no, why we should not do that. And I get started, actually, because the flip of the coin has decided both that I will be against the motion and I'll start the debate. All right, let's do this. Okay, let's do this. Sebastian goes first and argues against the motion. It's a tricky topic. I'll admit, by default, I would have said that anything that can help uncover the truth should be used. But over the years, I have also to admit, I've grown more and more cynical of the way our states, our governments, protect the privacy of citizens. Where do we have real democracies nowadays? I'm not so sure, to be very, very frank. One always discovers the shady undertakings of our governments after some years or after some decades. And I would even ask this open-ended question. Um, I know where I lean towards, unfortunately, today, but I'm going to ask that question. Who do you want to trust more today, a government or a corporation with your data? I think it's a really open-ended question today. And initially, I would have a trust in the state, but maybe not as, anymore as much. If anything, because they don't even understand how the internet works. And I'll say this with even more gusto, because you may have read in the news uh, recently, the current Japanese minister of IT security has never touched a laptop. Has never touched a laptop. He's in charge of IT security for Japan. We could have an opt-in option. We could get users to decide, yes, I'm okay in case there's a criminal case that needs to be solved, that the authorities can use my data. But I would only make it opt-in, not a by default thing. People say stupid things around these devices. And you don't want to get the police to get even closer to what you're thinking, even when you're saying stupid things at home, in the privacy of your home, because these is, this is where these audio devices are mostly located. Anyway, these devices don't record more than a few seconds of audio data. It waits just a few seconds, as you may or may not know, to hear the trigger words like Alexa or OK Google. So at most, it's just a few seconds of data. And already privacy has been perceived in the past few months and years as being eroded. So my recommendation is to keep these personal bits of data as separate as possible and not mingled with criminal cases, with what have you. And the potential to use these devices to set someone up by using false data, 
by some trick combination is not negligible. Some devices may not be the most secure. At least it could be very difficult to prove who was the user of that device at a, a given point of time. So no, I really don't think this data, this audio data of smart speakers should be used to solve any criminal case. Now, it's Dirk's turn. Let's hear his argument. There are two cases to distinguish. Number one, which is the one you seem to describe, is the recording is on your own device. So you actually had a chance to give an opt-in and it's an opt-in about your data and it's your device that is recording and your storage that you rented. The second case, though, is the trickier one. Another device data is being used. So you are with a friend. You never gave your consent, but your friend gave it. And you're recording just the same because something triggered the device. Hmm, not that easy, unfortunately. I make a difference because you can make a case that in the first case, you already agreed to the recording yourself. So it's part of the, the service agreement, if you will. And storing your voice in a service in the cloud actually also implies that your voice is already out of your home, just to burst that bubble as well. Uh, I know that's not what you meant. I know you mean the words being spoken in the privacy of your home, but technically you already recorded your voice and you sent it someplace else. So people don't even have to um, walk into your home or surveil your home. They basically just send an, a letter to uh, Apple or Google or what have you and Amazon and get access to your data that way. And that's a different story. I'm taking, and that's coming back to the original question, I'm taking, I think, an even more extreme stance than the one we suggest in the motion. I think nothing we have in data should be off limits to solve criminal cases. It's a question of degree. But if we talk about things like murder, rape, uh, really substantial, heavy crimes, police should have a way to subpoena data and subpoena any kind of evidence they can get their hands on, including the stuff that's recorded by Alexa. Because there's really no reason against that. Do you really want to want to have cases where, where you basically can solve a murder case with the recording of something that happened and you're not allowed to because we decided an arbitrary barrier to not access audio data just because it's a voice recording in a world where we actually are po where it's possible to find legal ways to surveil the home, break into it, search everything, have a warrant to seize the car and everything. And all of a sudden, the recording on this device is off limits. I beg to differ. No, it should be just as accessible as everything else, within limits, within procedure. There got to be due, uh, due procedure, no question about that. But uh, there, there shouldn't be a limit um, based on the cases that we are talking about. Next up, Sebastian. Let's hear his rebuttal. Actually, you convinced me. There should not be even an opt-in. You're right. The case with friends being recorded in with your own device. I did not even consider that. So actually, I take that back. Uh, maybe we should not even have an opt-in as an option. Um, the fact that your voice is being sent to the cloud because this is the way things are processed, well, yes or no. Uh, you can perfectly imagine, and I would not be surprised, this is the direction companies will take because of privacy concerns, that uh, a lot of these smart speakers will be actually using on-device algorithms and machine learning and what have you to work disconnected uh, from the internet uh, if you want to do that and still have most of the services working. So I think that's technically possible and it could be an option to consider. And the additional point, even if your voice is indeed still sent to the cloud, is that what I'm stressing is the need to separate the bits of data. Yes, the company has it, but my point is if you start mixing and matching and, and all this data with all the various databases from police, from other companies, it becomes a huge privacy risk of knowing everything about your life. So if we keep them separate from the state, from other companies, as much as possible, while still providing a valuable service, because it does provide a valuable service uh, in, in many cases for these apps and services, and the smart speaker is something that people seem to enjoy a lot considering the numbers that are being sold. My, my point here is you try to keep uh, the data as separate as possible. You're mentioning that, uh, yes, we should have an absolute respect to due process and due procedures. Unfortunately, when does this happen? Every single time we're disappointed. Look at the scandal that Edward Snowden had uncovered. Had the NSA, the Secret Service in the US, 
were surveilling Americans by the millions. And they did not even have to have the actual data, by the way, the audio data of the phone conversations. Uh, just having the metadata, which for our listeners for the, who may not be familiar with the concept of metadata, is things like which number are you calling at what time? And uh, you don't need to have the details of the conversation to realize what that person may be talking about. Let's say I'm calling a suicide line. Well, maybe I have a drug addiction issue, right? And you, you can infer things on people, especially if you can connect that data with, let's say, Facebook data and additional data points. So unfortunately, not only the state is often lying to us, and this is why I'm so cynical and so disappointed, and I still believe that our forms of democracies are the best ones that we know, but they're mistreating that data. So unfortunately, we live in that surveillance society even more because users allow their privacy settings to be quite lax. And I can give you examples. For instance, for instance, you have smartphones that people use everywhere. So in a way, you have camera slash like photo slash video surveillance anyway because they post these photos on Instagram, on Facebook, uh, with public settings. Or you have devices like Fitbit, which can provide valuable data, which helped murder cases, right? And Fitbit data, well, this is uh, data that can that is recorded monitoring your heart rate, and there's nothing that violates, in this case, free speech. This is why I'm so adamant where, where it's not a ban, but actually protecting your freedom of speech, of saying whatever you want on this device. And I really don't think it's going to solve many cases. I think the very, very small fraction uh, maybe the handful of cases that would be solved thanks to that audio data would probably very likely be solved with everything else that we have at our disposal in terms of tools and data. So I don't think we need audio data and we should really respect and protect, if anything, our freedom of speech and not mix audio data with the justice of the police system. Now, it's Dirk's turn. So the motion of today is about whether or not we should be allowed to use audio recordings done by smart speakers to solve criminal cases. We are not talking about state surveillance. By the way, newsflash, the NSA will record you and access your recording no matter what. Even if we decide it's not accessible to criminal cases, I don't, I don't think the NSA cares. So uh, this, is, this is out of the question. This is something we don't debate. What we debate is... You are a suspect or an important witness to a criminal case. And the case is waiting heavy enough that the recording on your device or anybody else's device for that matter could provide insights. Now, the police comes and makes a case for accessing that data. And there is a judge granting or denying that type of access. We have that kind of scenarios in pretty much all other parts of our life. You mentioned a number of examples. Actually, police can access your uh, Facebook data. Police can access your Instagram feed. If you Even if you decided to make that private, they can actually come with a warrant and uh, open that up. And Facebook has to provide them with the data on request, given that a judge signed that warrant. Uh, so we have that case. They can read your diary if you have a diary. So tell me, please, what is so holy about your voice that your voice needs to be protected when your writing in your diary is not off limits in a criminal case? We talk about a criminal case. We talk about due procedure. We talk about situation where, of course, as the police has to come up with valid reasons and there has to be legislation around that. I'm not talking about general surveillance. I'm talking about a legal procedure that allows police to access the data to solve criminal cases. It's important to stress that because it seemed to be confused here. Um, in that case, I wonder why to draw that arbitrary line. If I imagine something happening to, let's say, my family, I want every single piece of evidence being used to track down whoever did it. And right now, police has access to location data through cell phone provider. They can access Facebook. They can access Instagram, all the social media. There is no reason why they shouldn't be able to, to access recordings. And yes, maybe at some point there will be a technical way to secure recordings in houses but then they basically can force you to give it out so that's uh, the same like uh, today if you today um if you're locking your phone and a judge gives you a warrant that you ha are forced to unlock it um, they basically can put you in jail until you unlock it or give you a fine until you unlock it so it, it becomes for you a trade-off if you will 
uh, right now, um, if you if you don't have any legislation allowing police to access audio recordings and such, this is a bit of a limbo. That's a weird gray area. Then all of a sudden, where you can hide things, and I'm I would say you shouldn't be allowed to hide things in criminal cases. Thank you. Final statements, Sebastian. Let's hear it. The risk is clearly opening Pandora's box. Should we give access to solve murder cases? The next thing the police will ask is, hey, we can prevent crime if we get access to live data of what's happening because we can anticipate, we can use this as a signal, right, to preempt crime. How often do we have we had the police wanting to use various things or, or even uh, counterterrorism units using various bits of data to supposedly uh, prevent crime. How often was this useful? We know this today, almost never. So this is what I'm worried about, opening up Pandora's box. The second thing um, I want to stress that I mentioned very briefly is there's always a risk of this data being manipulated. But in the end, it's about freedom, freedom of speech. And I know in this case, it's very difficult to admit it. And you're using a bit of an emotional argument saying, what if it's someone of your family? But um, I would say we have to stay away from that emotional argument, which I would otherwise always do, and really try to avoid opening up Pandora's box and avoid using any kind of audio data from smart speakers to solve criminal cases. I think there's been way more cases of misuse of data than actual cases being resolved thanks to audio data in that case. Dirk. Sebastian, sorry to tell you, but Pandora's box is wide open already and it will stay open if we allow people to access audio data in criminal cases or not. Uh, the things you may you offered as a distinction, actually, you can legislate for that. You can say, you can set the bar really, really high as it is right now. If police wants to open your, your letters or if police wants to open your apartment to search it, they have to come with really compelling, solid reasoning. And I'm all for making it hard. Let's make it extra hard. I'm with you. Your voice is personal. Your recordings are personal. So there should be a really strong reason for that. And yeah, there is a slippery slope uh, that people start with criminal cases, end with terrorism, and then all, all of a sudden surveil everybody. But that has nothing to do with the original case that smart speaker audio data is potentially something that can be used to solve criminal cases. And in cases where this is warranted, we should have a way to do so instead of having a general ban on it. So what do you think? I, th I don't have a smart speaker. And you know why? Because I don't want to have recordings flying around from everybody. Uh, if you visit me, I have no way, at, to my earlier point, I have no way of asking your consent if you want to be recorded. I don't want to be recorded just without my consent, which is to say, well, I don't have a smart speaker. Because I don't like these devices very much. They don't provide nearly the value that I would hope they would. So you don't have a smartphone? But my smartphone is not set up, so it's always reacting to my voice. Um, really? Huh? Really? But then we are in the really? surveillance part, right? <laughs> I have plenty of microphones around yes, me. It's true. You can always record it's true. me. It's true. But the smart. <laughs> Mr. Microphone says he does not have microphones at home. <laughs> but uh, smart microphone. I mean, to be honest, you have dumb microphones. To be a bit serious here, a smart speaker is a device that's dis that's set up to always record. And it's uh, and yes. my other devices are not. Uh, my 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 smartphone is not even reacting if I'm saying okay Google. I just never turned this feature on. I have to tap the icon and then speak with it if I want to do that. And that's me triggering it. It's not accidentally recording everything around me. Yeah. So what do I really think? I think we are opening Pandora's box ourselves um, in many many ways, not just the smart speakers, but. Since we are living in that world, banning banning police from solving criminal cases through audio data is not going to close the box for us. It In the end, it makes things harder that shouldn't be harder. And that's kind of where I landed on when I prepared for that debate. What is your thinking? Um, initially, my default reaction is what I said. I would have been in favor of the police having access to everything. But then I, I really have become more cynical. I really do think that corporations nowadays are better equipped and have more 
for better or worse, have more money to be able to pay for security experts than governments. So unfortunately, I don't even, it's not that I don't trust the police in general, is that I don't trust their um, security equipment or their ability to not misuse the data for either personal or by accident, for bad personal misuse or by accident. So, and, and, and finally, like, so it, it made me think, like, I, I just think that the proportion of cases where you would actually solve a crime because uh, of only that data, I think is so low that it's not worth the risk, mm. to be honest. And in fact, in the case of the iPhone uh, for the terrorist attack in California, when they wanted to access it, that was not really to solve the case. I mean, they knew who had murdered everyone else. Uh, it was more, I guess, to part of the investigation to see if they could uncover any other terrorist network so, or you know, support to the terrorists. And I and I doubt that in itself, yes, maybe it would make the, the life of the police a little bit more difficult. But they, I think they have too much data. Actually, I should have said that. They have way too much data. They just don't know how to process it. And they miss all the so, signals because they are using way too many data points. So there, there are like three things here that I want to comment on. First off... Um, You're right. I do think that corporations are better equipped to secure systems. And by the way, the incentives work in their favor too. So government agencies actually have incentives not to tell you about security risk because they may use it in the future. Whereas Apple, Google, Microsoft, Amazon has an incentive to be trustworthy to customers across the globe um, and uh, therefore secure the system. So I'm completely with you on that. But what we are talking about is not using a security flaw or breaking any code what we're talking about is basically uh police showing up at uh let's say uh apple and say or at amazon and saying we want to have access to the recordings of the alexa device of this individual here is the letter that allows us to request that access please give us all the data records you have that's a different story it's not about security it's not about protecting data it's about getting legal access to something and um, the the other thing that you mentioned um, i do think it is a way to establish, for instance, location. It's not about uh, solving a criminal case, but for instance, proving a, a, a alibi. Alibi. So yes. um, proving that uh, I'm really, I really have been where I claimed I have been. If I could, uh, if you could basically say, um, yeah, we have a recording that uh, at so and so time the victim was in this in this place, and we have a recording of that. That that is a signal. It's one signal among many. I agree. Probably in many cases you have other signals, but I don't know why that should be enough to just disregard the signal altogether, or not just say you need to have all other sources exhausted before you can request access. That which would be the alternative, right? Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. So now getting further surveilled. I do have plenty of recordings of me flying around. And uh, again, what I said in the beginning, I hereby allow police to listen through the whole back catalog of all <laughs> two debate episodes <laughs> and use it in criminal cases. Yeah, for you do so. <laughs> and they, yeah, great. <laughs> So thanks for listening. Thank you for listening, as always. Go to the webpage to debate.eu and vote for or against the motion, depending on which side you think made the better and stronger arguments. Who convinced you the most? Also, don't hesitate to reach out if you think we could have used other arguments or missed an aspect you you found important to be noticed. We We cherish feedback. We cherish contributions of our listeners. And we always respond to feedback. Also. Yes. And we always love it, even if it's That's critical. <laughs> Especially when it's critical. Absolutely. Thank you very much for listening. Stay tuned. We have another debate being posted every week. Bye. Bye-bye.